Well, good night. It is cold and it is dark, but we're going tow truck to go get a broke down Peterbilt. Truck's full of air, means it's ready to go. Zach lift is all loaded up and ready to go. Uh, apparently a Peterbilt uh, broke down earlier this morning. I was able to get into a farm driveway and the people at the farm said, yeah, that's no problem. It can stay there for a bit. And then they called them and said, oh, uh, we forgot. We got cattle trucks coming in uh, first thing in the morning. So it's got to get out of there tonight. So we're loaded up, even though it's really cold. And uh, we'll see if we can get it out of there for them. And we are here. As soon as this car goes by, we can get out. We'll see what we got going on here. All right. Here is truck it told me uh, there's plenty of room to back in off the road and hook up to it from the rear and not be in the road um, I don't think that's the case but this is it what suspension does it have oh it's walking uh, spring over walking beam that might be easier to get it from the front anyway Got these lights on the back make it a pain to chain sling could fork the frame rail but that brake pot's right there in the way it's gonna have to get from the front and drop the drive shaft dang it well, at least it doesn't have some super low bumper on it yeah this would be the broke down one. Oh no look at that that is a cracked oil pan, meaning this thing threw a rod and that motor is done. So he said he already backed off the brakes. Which, uh, I guess this is the wheel chalk right here? Well, these aren't spring brakes anyway, so that don't matter. These ones are, and they do have the caging pins in them, so... Oh yeah, so this thing is free rolling right now, other than the transmission, so. And the good thing about this being a spring over walking beam truck is I don't have to air it up to air up the suspension to tow it from the front. So the brakes would be the only thing, they're already released. It's just the drive line, is this a... Oh, son of a... It's a press-in drive line. I don't want to do that. Hmm. See, this is one of those ones that should be so simple, but it's not. I was told plenty of room to back right in and grab it from the back, but can't do that because, you know, there's a road here. I don't want to shut down the road. I could squeeze in behind it over there and get it from the front, and they said it's not a fun spot to turn around down there if we have to, yeah, have to go out in the field and it's been wet, and that's probably a bad idea. So it'd be hook it from the front and then back out into the road to leave. But it's got a press in drive shaft and I don't want to press out a freaking drive shaft. I have the tools to do it, but it's also not fun. Okay, change of plans. I uh, went down to the store down the road to turn around because I think I can squeeze by this thing from this angle. It's a bump. There is not much room. There's a culvert right off my side right here. Don't think I'm out of the road. Not take out their fence, not take out his truck. Get all these extra lights on. Oh, now I can see. Woo! All right. All right hit the pole. Gee, what am I gonna hit? The, the power pole, the gate, or this truck? <laughs> okay. Woo! We're in here. Now we, we, hey. Hi, horsey. Uh, now we have to tow it because um, I can't get back out. Oh, what a mess this is. This is a, a simple mess, that's what it is. All right. Give me some PTO. Let's go screw with this. Let's, uh, I don't even know what. Let's grab some forks. We want these ones. Yeah, 
can already tell with how low the front axle and with the pick it up and set it on blocks. These through here. Got horses watching and judging me. So well, that's cool. Bring our underreach down. Probably gonna have to flip the receivers over to get low. I will definitely do that. Like I've said before, no matter which way you use these receivers on a job, it'll always be the wrong way for the next job. Oh, that's so not what I'm supposed to do. Other side, other side. See, because if we just flip them over, yes, they're low, but now they're inset and I want them out wide. So to put them out wide, we just go to the other side. See, because that hole is offset. Come on. So, I had the option, the state trooper knows all about this and that it needs to get out of here, because uh, that's a state highway. Um, he's in the area. I had the option to call the state trooper, shut down the highway, come in from the back and load it in the middle of the road, but I did not want to do that. Because um, tonight is the biggest DUI night of the year. Happy New Year's, by the way. Um, so I really don't want to be in the middle of the highway, shut down road with lights flashing all over. Well, I could not have parked this any farther away. Um, yeah, so we're gonna do this. Here's my plan, I haven't even explained the plan yet. My plan is, hook it from the front, throw it in neutral, Tow it down here into this farm yard, unhook it, go around the back, pick it up from the back and tow it backwards to its destination because then I don't have to pull the drive shaft out. It's not gonna hurt the transmission to go from here to there. I don't have to pull the drive shaft out, that stupid press in shaft. I have the press to do it and all, but like I said, it's cold, it's the middle of the night. It's a holiday night where I should be home with my family instead, so. Not doing all that, but we are gonna back it up, back it up. Yeah, like I said, not doing all that tonight. Well, I'm off center. Whatever. If it'll grab it, I'm gonna go with it. It's not like we're going on the road. What in the goofy front axle is even going on here? Shock mounts off the front of the axle? It's still gonna be in the way. to spin you back. Gosh, dang it. So, I flipped the receivers over. I didn't notice those shock mounts in front of the axle. They're gonna totally stop that from working. Meaning I have to flip them back the other way. And that's just done. Uh, I should have stayed home. You know what? I'm doing this. This is called close enough. We're not trying to grab the front axle by the correct out at the end spots anyway, so 
Why not? Okay, receiver's flipped. You go down. You go back straight-ish. And then... Just clear the bumper. Got it. Oh. All right. So, get this out of here. Highway department probably wants this back. Now we will put it in neutral. That shit was already in neutral, cool. So that highway post is you. Oh my god. Door latch doesn't latch. Okay. So. Okay, everything's rolling. So next problem is we're on a corner and that is not gonna clear that. So I'm gonna have to back out into the road to swing this thing wider. <sighs> okay. Okay, I need your votes. Should I just tie down the front axle where it is? pull the shaft and then I could totally just back out here under the road and then go down there to the store to turn around and leave or do I take it down the road here into who knows what kind of a farm field the lady said I'd have to go out into the pasture to turn around and she thinks it's probably hard enough to not get stuck but we don't know that so, uh, I'm going to pull the shaft, because the other option is go down there, turn around some farm field, drop the truck in the driveway, get back behind it, pick it up from the back and tow it backwards. No good options. No good options. Okay. We are going to get a half inch, I believe these are, and a ratchet. By the way, this US General Series 3 box I have in here has been awesome so far. What the shit? Is it 916s? It is 916s, okay. So we have to pull these caps off to start with.
Okay, this is called the Tiger Tool. It's got this notch on there that we slip over that. And then we, these press on the outside of the yoke and this pulls on the inside of the yoke, essentially. I guess if I were to come up here, you should see that top cap start to lift, which it is slowly. If your joints are greased really well, sometimes they come out easy. If they're not, most of the time they don't. Gosh. It's going. Okay, we're gonna bring it in. Okay, I'm gonna rotate it around so I can get to the other side from where I'm at now instead of climbing around the truck. Okay. There's that. Bastard's gotta go more. Okay. Come on. There it is. See it pop free? Look at now there's that gap up there. wonder if that's enough to come out. <laughs> My bad. That's enough. Oh. I was supposed to get that piece out or come flying out and go down the road. All right, what do we do with this stupid drive line? I'm going to spin around. Hey, my phone. Oh, no. Okay, update. This truck put up one hell of a fight, but I was super stubborn and eventually prevailed. Somewhere in the middle of uh, prying that drive shaft out of there, the camera battery died, and I just kept working because I didn't care at that point. So, drive shaft is out, tied up. I took a punch and hammered that other stupid ass cap out of there. It's all rusted in place, so it's not going to fly off going down the road. Even though as tight as it was in there, it ain't going to. All the brakes are backed off. I got my magnetic floodlights on the back here so that I can back out into the road and not run over their mailbox or their power box. 
that'd be bad. Uh, yeah, stuff is done. Safety chain's hooked up. We got the front axle tied down and it's forked on there. The only issue is like I'm worried about going forward and not clearing their fence, which, yeah, there's no way I would make that because this is just going to go right into there. And coming backwards, I got to make sure since it's already kicked this way, I don't kick it into their mailbox and I don't have much room to come over to stop that from happening because, you know, flower pots right here and a fence and a culvert and uh, puts uh, light bars on the back, by the way, safety chains, the stuff. Let's get out of here. Okay, I got good visibility of the whole road for a long way right out this window and out that sleeper window. I got great visibility coming the other way, so that's perfect. I can see traffic in both directions. You guys aren't going to be able to see jack shit as I back out of here, but... Um, I got to do what I got to do because this has to happen in one shot here. Detail off would help. Okay. All right. Now, let's just uh, hope to hell that he uh, backed those brakes off enough and we don't cook them going down the road. Okay, okay. We're going to go down to the store and turn around because we got to go the other direction to where this thing needs to be. All right, see you in a bit. Okay, now that we are on a short and out of full of it, I was going to say somewhat straight, not turned, levelish ground. Just the safety chain. Good. And then I'm going to come back here. I'm going to turn off the strobe lights that I had on while I backed into the road. Get these floodlights here. And we're going to go put them back in the compartment. These things are so freaking handy by being able to put them on the back of what you're towing to see where you're backing up in the dark. Because all those lights up there do, when you're backing up in the dark is light up the front of what you're towing and makes it so you can't see anything behind it. You know, like the mailbox and the power box and the, the road and such things. Oh, notice uh, no more flickering lights. Little adjustments, good to go. All right. We are... Just gonna go feel those brake chambers. I know you can't see because it's dark, but haha, <laughs> no, you can. Cold. Cold. If if I towed it that half a mile down the road like I did and those were rubbing, they would have warmed up. So we're good to go down the road. Let's get out of here. Alright, we're in the truck. Ready to go so we can turn off all strobes and auxiliary lights just our normal drive down the road lights looks like about a half hour drive where we're going we've got everything set again you guys can't see anything because you're down on my chest but we are good to hit the road and i will see you when we get there Must 
the easy drop off. How's it going? It's gonna go back like four feet. Okay, that's just fine. That's fine right there? Okay. Yeah, man. This fucking truck is paying my ass ever since the day I got it. Oh yeah. You know, yeah. Well, it makes you feel any better. It was a pain in my ass too. Uh, there, I couldn't back up to it, so oh, really? not enough room. no, not nearly enough room. So I, uh, I squeezed in in front of it and yeah. just hooked it from the front, but I had to pull the drive shaft to do that, and it had the press in drive shaft. Oh what? Yeah, oh, really? Yeah, it's got a press in shaft, so I had to press the shaft out of it with the press, oh. and then, uh, fine. And then those those U joint caps have not been out of there in a very very long yeah, time. You know, this truck's out for 15 years. Yeah, they, oh, yeah. they felt like it trying to press them out of there. <laughs> the old guy that had it, let it sit for about 15 years. What do you plan on doing with it? Uh, me, I was, I was uh, hauling asphalt with it. Oh, okay. Yeah. I put the belly down. I just got rid of the trailer. Oh, yeah? Right before you came and picked it up, uh, the truck up. Yeah. Yeah, I appreciate it, man. Yeah. Are you going to rebuild it, or? Oh, uh, yeah, I'm going to have to, man, because, I mean, I got it. I can't, afford, I can't afford a, I can't afford a new motor for it, so I just have to rebuild it. I think I threw a rod though. You did. The oil pan is uh, go, the oil pan's blown out, so I definitely threw a rod. Look at the oil pan's all oh, yeah. busted apart. So. Oh yeah. Uh, oh yeah. Yeah, I threw a rod. I, I think I see a window in the block. So. Oh yeah. There's a. Yeah, you're not rebuilding. The side of the block's gone right there. Oh yeah. Yep. Holy shit. Yeah. That motor well, it looks like I'll have to get. I'll step up and get a B model this time. <laughs> yeah, that motor's done. Yeah, the, the old 3406A. Yeah, shoot. Well, my Ford Power Stroke blew the motor about four months ago. And I'm just getting it out of the shop next week. Oh really? Yeah. Oh, that sucks. Yeah. Man. Well, if you uh, if you decide you don't want to mess with rebuilding this, a good friend of mine collects these 359s. Oh, really? He is he is a sucker for a 359. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, because it's a, I mean the rest of the truck, it's a good old truck, really. I mean, it, yeah, it it's solid. It looks like yeah, other it, than you know this yeah. the block. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it is a solid truck. The tranny was good, and the rear end and. Uh, yeah, my uh, yeah, good friend of mine. He is a sucker for a 359, and really? he's out of Texas now. But he loves this. He loves buying 359s out of California and rebuilding them. Oh wow! So yeah, I'd love to have the cover because yeah, I think next year I'm gonna rent at least a new one. Yeah. Instead of constantly on the side of the road. Full maintenance lease, and then you don't got to worry about it. Yeah, exactly. exactly. If I didn't need something like specialty like this, I would look really hard at a full maintenance lease. Yeah. Yeah. It's a hundred percent tax. Your lease payment's a hundred percent tax write-off. Yeah, yeah, and I got plenty and, of work next year for it, you know. Yeah, and then uh, if the truck has any problems, they bring you a new one and fix right. it. And you keep running. You don't have downtime. Right. No yeah. Downtime. Do you have any uh, wheel chocks or blocks? Yeah, I'm going to put it in gear, but I'd rather block the wheels too. Okay. Oh, <laughs> that's stupid. 
<laughs> dumbass. Putting it in gear doesn't do any good when I pull the drive line out of it. Oh, I'm dumb. Yeah, I, I just thought that, you know, I pulled the drive line out, so putting it in gear isn't going to do anything. <laughs> it's been one of those nights. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, that, I really appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Stay. Yeah. I can. Oh yeah, it's on the blocks. Yep, we're good. I'll go get your cash. Okay. Whew. Like it's not a bad looking truck. The body, the frame, all that is solid as could be. Just uh the engine block is not so solid. Might open the hood and take a look at it just out of curiosity. In fact, I know I will. Okay. We got remote, light bar, straps, these lights, if you are, these are the handiest freaking lights I have. If you are anywhere in Central Oregon-ish area passing through, utility trailer in Redmond, Oregon. They have these there. They will sell them to you and you will love them. Oh, 359 things. There's a, there's a piece of the engine. That's not good. Well, I second look at uh, the hole right there. The, uh, the chunk of the engine block sitting here on your heater oh, yeah. hoses is probably a bad sight. And yep, yeah, that probably is. Yeah, there's your, there's your rods right there. Oh, shit. Yeah, that fucker came loose and came out and out. out. And I just checked them too. They were, they were fine. I had the oil pan off before, just about two months, three months ago. Oh, fuck. Yeah. Wow. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's some business. It's still knocking. <laughs> yeah. That, you know what? The funny thing is, is these trucks, they, I mean, they run on anything. It still runs. You it start it, it right still out. runs? Yeah. Really? <laughs> yeah. You can start it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, it's amazing. Oh, yeah. It cracked all this back here. And Jesus, everything. man. Good Lord. Good God. You know, and it was, the thing is, is, is I, ha I thought I had a, a bad valve, uh, exhaust valve right up here on, on number, I think it's six. Yeah, it'd be number six. But, uh, I looked at it and it was a little corroded more than the rest of them and I was like, well, maybe it's just a bad valve seat because it started running a little bit funny. And then I changed the oil, pulled the pan, checked everything, everything seemed fine. And then I was like, well, maybe it's just, I just need to adjust the rockers. And uh, so I adjusted them and it spurred like a kitten again and all of a sudden I was get, grabbing gears trying to get out of that stop sign up there. and. Uh, boom! It just you, you made the top end make too much power for the bottom end. Something. <laughs> you should have left it. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, I had a baby blue truck with yeah. a red frame one time. Oh I, really? Yeah, that thing tried to kill me. Oh shit. Yeah, brake pedal fell off, and over the edge I went off a cliff, oh. rolled it into a canyon. Really? Yeah, good times. Oh, God, I love that truck. I know. Apparently, I, it hated I love me. I hate this truck right <laughs> now. That's about where I was with that one. The brake pedal. Is a very important safety feature on your truck. So you should make sure that the little pin that holds it in doesn't come out and it falls off of there. Because if it does, your truck ends up upside down at the bottom of a canyon. That's not good. 
Yeah. That little pin right there. Very cheap and very expensive all at the same time. Dude, I got, I mean, I, the interior is absolutely I know, I saw the interior. looks accurate. great on this thing. The body's in great shape. Oh, yeah. You can tell it was a California truck. I mean, oh, look yeah. at all this is just... Yeah, it's straight out of uh, Sacramento. Oh, it's got all the carpet. Yeah, this thing is nice. Yeah, it is nice. It's all original, too. And it's got the uh, Corvette dash. Yeah. And uh, This thing is really nice. Yeah. And and, and I got a sick-ass system in it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I got, like, seven speakers in it. I can show you the seats. But plus, it's got a wet kit. Yo, yeah, I saw that <laughs> while I was under there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, your, your drive shaft is out and hanging up right here. Yeah, okay. That's and cool. then all the caps and all the stuff are in a uh, uh, Ziploc bag on the floorboard of the driver's side. No problem. Thank all you. Right. You want me to close this? Oh, uh, no, I got okay. it, man. I'm going to kind of tinker with it here. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right, you have a good one. Okay. Let's uh, leave. Well, that job uh, completely kicked my ass. Uh, one, because I chose to do it the harder way. Two, because I've been really sick and everything to kick my ass. Uh, I had the option to uh, have the state trooper shut down the highway so I could block it sideways and grab it from the rear, tie the steering wheel straight, and get out of there. But uh, like I said, this is the uh, the busiest drunk driving night of the year. Actually, now it's the here. Uh, so right in the middle of drunk driving time, I didn't want to be in the middle of the road with flashing lights and all that that attract drunk drivers. They don't, they don't deter drunk drivers, they attract them. We actually just had, two weeks ago, I think, 10 minutes from where we were just working on the side of the highway. Uh, 10 minutes away, different highway, but 10 minutes away, uh, there was an accident. Unfortunately, it was a fatal one. So they shut down the highway to do accident investigation. And with every flashing light you could imagine on that scene, uh, the state's own traffic control truck with flashing lights, giant, huge message support sign above it uh, saying road closed, drunk driver plowed right into it. And then while they were working that secondary accident, on the other side of the original accident scene, uh, another drunk driver plowed into everybody from that end, closed highway. So I most definitely did not want to be in the highway, and I, so I chose to sneak around in front of that thing, hook it from the front, pull the drive shaft out, even though it was a Preston drive shaft, but that made everything way more involved, but man, I didn't have to sit in the highway. Yes, it was harder. Yes, it took way longer. Yes, it means I get home a whole lot later than I wanted to, but it means I get home, so. And of course, like what we just saw, I can say, yeah, I could have backed right up to it, forked the rear, tied the steering wheel straight, and been out of there in 10 minutes, but it's always those ones you think are so easy, like I just thought there, that just kick your ass and take forever. And then a lot of times it's the ones you look at and go, man, this is gonna be terrible. They just go like clockwork. Uh, same thing in the off-road recovery. I've had so many that I pull up to and be like, oh yeah, we're just gonna give them a quick tug out of those holes and off we go. And two hours later, we're still shuffling and digging and now I'm stuck and it never fails. So I played it safe, did it the harder way. Probably looked like a complete amateur, but I don't care. So I'm gonna go home, get some sleep, and uh, we'll see you guys next time. Thanks, uh, Thanks for coming along and being my my New Year's Eve company tonight. Uh, quite the night. I'll see you later.